Hello to everybody from Tiverton Bead and Wool Shop again and welcome to our little podcast about shop life, uh, knitting, crafting and all sorts of interesting going on. Uh, yep, yeah, so the first thing is Christmas is coming and uh, we've been busy in the shop and there has been some, quite a few new additions which I will show you in a minute. But the first thing, I think you can't miss the thing behind me, can you? This little beauty. This little beauty is our first addition to the new display cabinets, uh, which we are changing over from a well-known high street retailer. And uh, yeah, we had the white cubes uh, all over the shop and we're slowly changing over to proper antique furniture. But there is a twist because all our furniture, all our new cabinets, will be for sale as well. So this one, if you come in now, there is a price tag for that. And if you would like to have it, I trust me, I can empty it in 10 minutes and it can be yours. So there will be more like that coming. So we are working hard uh, to select and find the really interesting, beautiful pieces which would make shop look good and encourage to you maybe make your home look good as well. So that's the little twist. And uh, yeah, this one behind me is actually 18th century um, oak dresser, if you are interested. So that's for the, about the furniture. And yes, yeah, so we are working in behind the scenes. We are working quite hard to, you know, to find the pieces because uh, with antiques, it's not like you can go in a shop and order it and it will be here in three weeks or six weeks. Uh, you need to scout, you need to look, and sometimes you find it and sometimes it's too much money or so on so on so on yeah so that's it so now uh new things and then i will show you maybe uh what i'm knitting or what i'm doing at the moment the new things in the shop uh for the knitters i have got in new sock yarn because it is sock knitting season and we sell quite a lot of sock yarn uh, but this one is new for regia and it's called color line and as you can see, it's a cake yarn, which I quite like. As you see behind all the new display is cake yarns from various companies. So this one is a sock yarn in a cake. And what I like is that you can see the colors which will be coming in. And this one is the one which, if you look on the sock, it just gradually changes the color. But it's a classic four ply, uh, classic sock yarn, 25% nylon, uh, 75 wool, 100 gram ball, uh, one ball does a pair of socks and this one is oh my god this morning i can't see for love or money i think it's 400 meters yeah 400 meters in a ball and it comes i have four colors in i have this nice pale which is kind of i hope you can see it. no you can't where would be the best oh there is nearly there is a nice kind of aqua with paler grays then this one is very interesting this one now shows you slightly the color slightly brighter than it is, but it's pale lavender with a little bit of salmon, coral, and a little bit of wine red. So that's nice. And then this one is very bright blue, kind of quite jazzy peacocky socks. And this one is more subdued with dark navy coming to paler blues and yellows. So which is again very, very nice color. So yeah, these ones are available now in the shop uh, for the last minute socks. And other thing which we got in specially for Christmas, well, not specially for Christmas, but we are kind of, for those of you who come into shop, know that we are uh, introducing quite a lot of ready to wear uh, garments. And you wouldn't believe how difficult it is to find actually uh, garments which I would call this pedigree which means it would be made of good quality materials or made in UK or designed in UK manufactured in UK it's really difficult uh, there's only far a uh, few um, companies there's quite a lot of small producers but the small producers sell the products themselves they don't supply shops so it is quite difficult but I have found this company it's a Scottish knitwear company uh, can you see oh upside down you, I hopefully you can re read it so the company name is E R I B and E with the 
thingy above. How you pronounce it, I don't know. I pronounce it Eribe. So hopefully it's right. And what they do, uh, they design products, they manufacture, they spin uh, all its British wool. So it's quite nice to have something which, like I say, has a pedigree a little bit. And what I have ordered is these, they call them beret hats, right? And I love them. It's a nice fair isle and I like that little, you know, this little thing there, the little pom-pom. They are gorgeous. And the colours are, some of them are quite nice subdued. Some of them are quite vibrant. And I quite like that. Having said that, these beret hats, I don't know, is I would call them more like a loose beanie than a beret. Because you see, when you put it on, the, there, is, there is, you know, the beret... Um, kind of disappears. I will try to pull it on and ruin my hair for all day, but hey, anything for publicity in it. So that's how the hat looks when you pull it on. So you can see what I mean is there is nearly no bureau left. So, but it's a nice loose fit beanie, and I shouldn't wear. Don't look how it looks on a normal person. The beanie hats look much better. The beanie hats is just not something I should be wearing, but I don't know why I constantly end up doing it on the camera. And to match those there is pairs of mittens and I love the idea of doing fingerless gloves and every finger different so these ones would fit medium to large women's hand they fit me and yeah so you can see this one matches this pair matches this beret so if you want matching pairs there is another pair like that of his orange and yellow fingers and that matches that one yeah, and uh, and there is beautiful Cardis as well. I think Cardis, if you go on our Facebook or uh, on our website, uh, everything is there, so you can have a look. So website I will put below in uh, description. So you, and uh, links as well to the knitwear and to the Cardis and so on, so on, so on. Right. So that's about the ready to wear stuff and furniture. Now uh, we start to talk. We can talk about uh, what we are doing. What what I am doing. And to be honest, it, even though it's, we are in the middle of knitting season and Christmas is coming and all the gifts and all of them, so I hit, like I think around 10 days ago, I hit kind of, and I would, I would call it uh, knitting fatigue. I just looked around and I thought, oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. Oh, oh I wish I could do something with that. Oh, oh. And, I know there is, I will be closed for two, three weeks in January, so I will have quite a long period off so I can get some bigger projects going. But you know, it's like I finished my nice jumper, so I have my jumper to wear for this year. So I'm thinking, like, mm, oh, what else? And I have my shawl, uh, the Stephen West shawl in a go. But somehow I have tried now in a shawl all the colours I want to put in. And, <coughs> excuse me, I have no excitement anymore. You know what I mean? Because every time I was putting new color or trying something, you know, new combination, it was always, oh, will it work out? Oh, how it will look. And now I have tried all the colors. Now I just need to continue and finish the project. And it's kind of, I will do it. I will do it. In, I would say, in January podcast, you will see the finished shawl. I promise. <clears throat> yeah. Which Christmas? Which January? I didn't say, didn't I? But, uh, yeah, so I bit hit kind of and then I thought like oh this yarn came in and you know there online you can find a lot of samples where people have used this color changing gradually color color changing yarn and a single color together in a fair isle and it looks stunning if you get it right and I looked in those and I thought like, oh I quite like that and then I saw the color uh, I will try not to ruin my display but and then I saw this one, the Isiger Highland. And this one is color called rhubarb. And the rhubarb and this one in the real life looks really nice together because it's, there is a little, can you see there is a little bit of rhubarb and there is the rhubarb. And I thought like, oh, I can do some fancy, fancy mittens. And you have seen some of the podcasts where people uh, try to uh, knit a Latvian mittens because there was a few years ago, there somehow somewhere in one of the trade shows, there was somebody selling kits and it like a Latvian, Latvian mittens. The only thing they didn't realize, we never give you instructions properly, do they? 
We don't like instructions. We don't live by instructions. This is the book I use if I want to find a nice feral pattern. And uh, this is a book uh, written in Latvian. I think there might be, might be a translation uh, as well in English, but all it is is patterns, 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 patterns. The only printed word is in the back, which gives you kind of general info about thumb, how to use the thumb patterns, which are there, so you can pick your thumb pattern, how to do Latvian plat in three sentences, and a couple other bits, what means in if the pattern has something. So there is three pages in general, and then in English there is just a historical description of symbolism of mittens in Latvian folklore. So basically, you need to know what you're doing, which I pretend I do. But anyway, yeah, so the only thing with these mitts, they are beautiful, but you really need a finest yarn you can get your hands on, which would knit Feral quite strong country wool, because some of these really decorative mitts you have nearly 60 stitches across. So you would have 30, if you, you, that would be like 120 stitches for all the way around the mitt. And if you knit on normal four ply, your mitt would be like the size of this book. So you really need to find fine, fine yarns and knit on really, really fine needles if you want to accommodate that number of stitches. But I was going through the patterns. I thought I found something which, and I was experimenting uh, with two millimeter needles. And I've used here the new sticks, the Knit Pro sticks. They are quite snazzy, and especially for this size, the two millimeters, because I thought like, well, if I go in bamboo, which I prefer in general, I really will break the needles, wouldn't I? So I opted for this metal and I really like the sticks. If I would go for metal for sock knitting, I would use these ones because they are very, very lightweight. That's what I like. Normally, uh, the metal needles are aluminium needles are quite heavy. So these ones, I think they might be hollow, so they are quite lightweight. But there is the trick. There is the rhubarb and the lavender sock yarn. And you see, you can nearly not see it's too close i need more contrast oh and here on the bottom there can you see that part i tried to do latvian plat historical way which is kind of it's easier uh, than the new way where you need to use you need two rows you need at least two rows to create a minimum two rows to create a plat so you you kind of weave one way and then on the next because normally it's done on a round on the next round you do plat the yarn other way so which creates kind of zigzaggy nice pattern and you need more contrasting yarn because here on the plat it nearly molds into one so you don't see the contrast you don't don't see the various stitches so that was a bit disappointing so with that I thought uh, well it didn't make my knitting fatigue lesser so I kind of, I have tried and it's not 100%. So I need to maybe work on the colors and decide something different. But one day, one day I will knit proper Latvian mittens and I will show you. Just don't know which day it will be. And then, and then, oh, what have I done with it? Oh, I have left it on the counter. I will be back in a sec. And then I started my next project because I acquired this book in the shop, which is a Rowan magazine number 60, which is a few years old. Uh, it's not this season, it's I would say a couple years back at least, I think because now we are on magazine 64 or 65, but there are some really beautiful patterns in there. And of course, I decided that I need a skirt. Would you believe it? And I fall in love with this one. I like the color, 
I like the style and I thought like mm. and if I do fancy you see next page there is a cardigan in the same pattern you know same fair eyely pattern and I thought like well if I do fancy I can make myself cardigan to match but that would be like for, do the skirt first the only thing of course she stands there pretty and I started knitting I got the colors felt a tweed and this is my little runt against designers right the pattern is lovely the colors are beautiful the fair isle part is very well thought out because I looked through and for those of you who knit feral, I will understand what I'm talking about. That the stitch count, uh, there is no overstretch more than three stitches. So it works quite well. So it's not too much of weaving in the back involved. You know, the twisting, the, you know, the cords and the yarns and catching them. So I thought like, oh, this is nice and easy. The only thing is, when I started it, I thought, I know that. Possibly most of you experienced knitters know that. What happens with the stockinette stitch when you knit it in a tube without a rib? It curls, it goes into sausage. And you know and I know that there is nothing in this life, including blocking, steaming, uh, pressing, which will stop the stockinette stitch to go back in a sausage. And guess what? This skirt doesn't have any ribbing anything it starts in a plain stockinette stitch and there is my sausage right can you see the power of the curl on the bottom edge and there is my runt why on earth designer makes something so beautiful so pretty which is technically wrong because technically I will not be wearing skirt with the bottom rim going like that, am I? I wouldn't take the risk because you never know how far the sausage will go. So, why on earth didn't you put a normal sensible rib, pico, uh, something on the edge which would stop this process? All it needs is an edge. You know it, I know it, but if somebody with less experience starts this project, they will be totally disappointed because they will finish the skirt and they will never wear it and they'll say well I'm not wearing this because it curls and they don't know why because they don't have the experience so really not only beauty but we would like substance as well and I'm really annoyed that I didn't listen to my common sense because I cast it on and I thought like this will curl this will curl no, well, because they start in a smaller needle and then they increase, so that might stop the curling. And I'm reasonably loose knitter, so I can imagine if my tension would be a bit tighter, this curl will be a proper, you know, this would be a proper sausage there. So now I will end up, when I finished, I will end up picking up the edge and knitting the rib, you know, from there. I know I can do it. But I could have done it a much easier way and started with the rib instead of picking the stitches. So that's my little runt. Runt against designers who cannot put a substance into the beauty. And there's been other couple projects this year where you think like, this is gorgeous. This is really, really nice. But the way how it's constructed or what they ask you to do like with bands and uh, it's like, oh my god, please put substance in it. And that goes to all the brands I stock. It's nothing like you can't pick one and say, oh, these ones are good guys and these ones are bad guys. Every year in mo most of the brands, there will be items which look really nice, but you just can't achieve the result because it will never work. And the trouble is, sometimes we don't look through, I don't, I can't read every single pattern in every coming in the shop it's until somebody tells me uh, well this construction doesn't work very well or you know this doesn't fit I have no idea but anyway that's the rant over coming to the beauty part oops no I lost the ball but that's all right ignoring the sausage I think 
the pattern works really nice. And you see what I mean, that the ferrule is quite easy. There is like one, 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 and then it's like three stitches. And all I have started the new pattern line there. And again, it's very, very easy because it's small stitch count. So that part was thought out really thoroughly. And I would say, well done. That's the bottom line. The bottom line. The curls. Anyway, yeah, that's kind of what I'm working at the moment. And even though it looks kind of a mammoth task, because I have gone, where is my chart? Oh yeah, and there they have made the model stand with legs wide apart, just to make sure the bottom line stays straight. So what happens when you walk? God knows. But anyway, yeah, the chart is quite mind-blowing, right? It's over two pages. But I'm now on a row 36, I think. And I can do, I thought I could do 10 rows an evening, but I think I'm down to eight rows an evening, roughly. But the total is 200. So when I divide like that, it's not so bad. So I can do half, nearly half a skirt 80 rows in 10 days and that's without being that's only doing a couple hours in the evening so that's not that bad even though you look and it's like oh and the other thing which I like why I like knitting this these kind of things is I have a lot of reference points and I don't know how you knit but I always find that if I knit something and I see here oh in the five rows I will be changing the color oh that's something to look forward to then you change the color oh and, and, and you don't realize that you have suddenly gone like nearly you have half a project done like that instead of just uh, doing plain and then die from boredom but right so that is just about it for today as I said I have a little bit of knitting fatigue I think it's because the shop's been busy and uh, we kind of need to open up in a minute so I've been up early as well so that's not good no 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 so it's fine we will be fine so uh, we will have possibly another podcast just before christmas uh just a little warning if you're watching and you will uh, miss the next one we are always closed between christmas eve and mid-january so please please uh follow the facebook look on our website uh we are opening up again on 17th and 18th of january 17th of january friday and 18th saturday our normal opening hours and we will have a Roman trunk show in. What is trunk show? Trunk show is where the company provides us with all sorts of interesting materials, samples and things like that. Uh, we make a nice display, we open the bubbly, maybe, and we enjoy our day. We look, uh, you know, to give you some inspirations, it's just browsing day, uh, looking, having uh, to look through the project, but. Uh, yeah, put it in on your calendar. So that one is already an event on our Facebook page. So you can have all the information there. So thank you very much for watching. If you would like to, uh, please subscribe. Don't forget to do that because we do like to see the new subscribers. And give us thumbs up if you like us. And I hopefully will not have thumbs down. Won't I? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And this is so funny because I'm doing it on a laptop and we are so used to touch screens that all I want, there's a red button to switch myself off. And I, all the time I want to do this with finger and it doesn't do it, does it? I need to go to my mouse pad and do it like that, like on computer. So thank you. And I stop ranting and see you all soon.